Today, I have the perfect fall recipe for you. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. If this is your first time here, my name is Pamela and I like to share deliciously easy plant-based recipes. So if those are the types of videos that you like, be sure you click that little red subscribe button down below along with the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. This week, I've got a recipe that is perfect for fall. It even has all of the fall colors red, orange, yellow, all of them. It's called a Three Sisters casserole. And it's called Three Sisters because it has squash, beans, and corn, which are uh, three crops that grow very well together. Um, and they also taste really good when you cook them all together. So this dish is super easy to put together and you can actually prepare it a day ahead of time and then bake it on the day that you're gonna serve it. So it's one of those dishes that um, is kind of perfect for Thanksgiving. You make it the day before, cook it the day of um, while you're cooking everything else, um, and then you just serve it. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'm starting off by dicing up one medium onion, and I'm just doing kind of like a medium fine dice. Um, nothing too big, nothing too small. And then I'm going to dice up one red bell pepper. And again, nothing too big, nothing too small. You want everything to be about the same size dice. All right. And then I'm just going to water saute, starting with the onion and then one tablespoon of minced garlic. And this is just pre-minced garlic. You could use fresh garlic if you wanted to. And I'm just going to um, saute all of this down until it's pretty cooked down. Um, you'll notice that I've got to like deglaze the pan here in a second. So um, saute this until it's all nice and soft um, and kind of starting to brown and stick to the pan. So it gives it um, a lot of nice, good flavor and then add in your bell pepper and again cook that down until the bell pepper is starting to stick to the pan it's getting nice and soft and you have to deglaze it with a little bit of water that's going to give everything a lot of flavor And there you see I'm deglazing and you'll see that the water turns a little bit of brown. That's the flavor that you're picking up um, off the bottom of the pan. That's kind of the caramelization that you're picking up there. Up next, I'm going to add the spices, which are rosemary, cumin, and cayenne. And you'll notice the rosemary is a fine grind. I used a mortar and pestle to do that. Um, and just go ahead and dump it all in at once and stir to combine. And then I'm gonna add a can of diced tomatoes and two cups of frozen uh, butternut squash. Now you could use fresh butternut squash if you want to, um, but I like the ease of frozen butternut squash. So use whichever one you want. And one cup of corn. Again, this is uh, frozen. It's actually frozen from fresh that I cut off of a cob. And then salt, you're gonna salt to taste. So um, I usually use, I don't know, 11 to 20 uh, turns of my salt mill. And then uh, pepper again to taste. And then go ahead and stir everything to combine nice and well. And then you're gonna cover this and cook it over about medium heat until that butternut squash is nice and soft. So you're gonna use a fork to test and make sure that it's tender. So um, I'll, you'll see here um, kind of how easy it should be to pierce with a fork. So there you go, it should go in just nice and easy. And then take the lid off, add a can of pinto beans, and again, stir to combine, and then cook everything still over medium heat, and you're gonna cook off all of the liquid. So you want this to be um, not very liquidy because it's gonna go into a casserole, and so you don't want the um, polenta to get soupy. So um, you'll see in a minute what I mean. So when I go to stir it, you'll notice that uh, most of the liquid has kind of cooked off and it's not really soupy anymore. 
So there we go, most of the liquid is gone, so I'm gonna take that off. Up next, I'm gonna boil four and a half cups of water, and I'm gonna skip ahead, <laughs> and then add one and a half cups of polenta to that, and you are going to stir that for two to three minutes constantly um, over high heat and then you're gonna add oregano and salt and pepper just to season this all of the measurements will be um, down in the description box below and then you're gonna lower the heat down to medium low and cook this for 15 to 20 minutes adding water as needed so it doesn't get too thick and just stirring every now and again uh, to make sure it doesn't turn into one big glob of polenta. And this is what it should look like when it's done after about 15, 20 minutes. I usually cook it for about 20 minutes and add um, a couple extra half cups of water or so. All right, and then I've got a Pyrex dish here. I'm just gonna spray with a little bit of oil and I'm gonna add a little bit of polenta down in the bottom. And I probably could have actually used a little bit less than this. Um, you don't need too thick of a coat on the bottom, just a little tiny um, layer on the bottom for some color. And I've got a little piece of polenta here <laughs> that uh, kind of turned into a hard glob, so I'm gonna pull that out and replace it with a little bit more of the soft polenta and then add in all of the filling in the middle there. And if you wanna skip the polenta step here, you could actually put this into an acorn squash. Um, that would also be really delicious. Um, so if you're completely grain free, put this in an acorn squash. And then go ahead and top the rest of this with um, the rest of that polenta and spread it out evenly. And it's okay if a little bit of the filling is poking through, it just gives it kind of a nice pop of color. Um, and as you can see, all of the fall colors are present here. This is so beautiful. It is fall in a Pyrex dish. <laughs> And then go ahead and bake this. I will put the baking instructions in the description box down below. That is what it looks like when it is all baked up. You can bake it the next day, as I mentioned. So you can uh, kind of assemble it one day and then bake it the next day. And the first, the first slice is always the hardest to get out. So it always cracks in the middle. <laughs> but let it cool a little bit before you um, slice into it and get a slice out. And there you have it. So the top is nice and kind of baked polenta and then the bottom is a nice creamy polenta. And there you go, fall in a Pyrex dish. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this version of a Three Sisters casserole. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, be sure to do it before you leave, and I will see you next video.